up, everybody? It's me, it's Alexis Maurice, and yes, I am flying solo on tonight. Listen, I wanna talk about the Where Is Wendy Williams documentary. If you know me, and for those of you who really know me, y'all know I love and I adore Wendy Williams. It was so much going on in this documentary that I wanna take some time to kind of unpack it. Yes, we need to unpack a little bit of this alcoholism. We need to un unpack this financial guardianship that she's a part of. We need to unpack why the hell is little Kevin's Uber Eats bill $100,000 a year, child? We need to unpack what the hell is Will managing? We need to unpack this Sean chick who's the biggest opportunist in the whole world, the publicist, who was trying to get Wendy Williams to go to the damn Oscars when she's out of her mind. So go ahead and pour yourself a glass of wine, put up a chair because we're about to get into some things. The Where Is Wendy Williams documentary. <laughs> Now, before I begin, please make sure that you like this video. Go on ahead and hit that like button down there. You subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can receive notifications when a new video is posted. Please make sure that you share this video on all of your social media platforms. And most importantly, while I'm talking, while I'm giving my commentary, I'm gonna need for you to comment too and go down and type your little fingers on them little keyboards and let me know what you're thinking as well. When I first found out that there was going to be a documentary about Wendy Williams, I was over the moon. I was ecstatic. And the reason I was happy because I don't know about y'all, I miss Wendy on my television screen. Every morning, 10 o'clock, Wendy Williams came on. Just the way that Wendy was, the way that she de delivered these hot topics, everybody wanted to know what the hell was Wendy Williams going to say about this topic or what she was going to say. And two, where the hell has she been? It's so much shit that's been going on between Diddy and all of these lawsuits that Cam Newton fighting people down to the Little League Pop Warner game. There was just so much stuff that happened that we needed Wendy on television. We didn't know where she was at. So like I said, I was looking for to this documentary. Now, when I saw the trailer, bitch, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. When I saw that trailer, I was like, hold the line, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold the line. What the hell is going on with Wendy? This is not the last Wendy that we saw a couple years ago. This Wendy is on TV cussing bitches out. Maybe she's drunk as hell. Her eyes about to pop out of her head. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So it caused me to take pause for just a little bit. I was a little concerned when I saw it. But baby, when I saw her and that black china, that promo clip. And I think I'm gonna be back and forth from New York, so I'm gonna be coming to see you more. Well, my real name is Wendy Hunter. Hunter. Yep. Mm hmm And I'm divorced. Yes. He's got no money. Yeah. 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 I love you. So do I. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh. Mm. It, oh God. I almost cried. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I, there was a little lump right here in my throat, <laughs> right here in my throat that I had to swallow it and I had to gain my composure because that's not the Wendy I'm used to seeing. And, and the thing about it, what was so hurtful about seeing that particular clip, this woman who had this wit about her, she said it like she meant it at all times, whether, whether you liked it or not. Wendy was such a pivotal, part or influential role of, uh, into who I am today. Wendy used to come on, I think it was 103.9 in Columbia, South Carolina. I think so. Y'all y'all let me know if it was 103.9. But Wendy used to come on, I was in high school, me and my good girlfriend Stacy sometimes used to like listen, was like, did you listen to Wendy Williams last night? Who was this woman who was on the radio saying whatever the hell she wanted to say? It was a complete contrast from Oprah, who was more poised on television. And then you got Wendy Williams. And you know, I kind of like Wendy because she got down to the get down, girl. The people who used to call up there used to call us some scandalous things, bitch. I mean, the scandals were scandaling. So I was like, well, damn, I can do what she's doing. 
And then you got Charlamagne was a sidekick. He's from South Carolina. So it was just one of those things like, damn, like what she does, I, I can see myself doing that. I went to college, graduated with a BA in broadcast communications. Um, Wendy is one of the reasons, and Oprah was one of the reasons why I started The Wind Up, which was formerly known as Hollywood Happiness, for those of you who've been around long enough to know the difference. And to be honest with you, it's one of the reasons why I completely did a reboot of my career in 2020. And I went into um, broadcast. You know, I'm now working for... I'm working for somebody in your goddamn business. Now, going into this documentary, you gotta kinda understand what was going on with Wendy prior to this. Wendy's mom died. You know, she's told us time and time again that that was her best friend. We used to see old girl down to the front row when her and her husband used to come up and visit Wendy. And Wendy mama, child, she was messy as hell. She loved all of the mess. She passed away, but Wendy was working, so... And it was crazy because Wendy just blurted it out one day. But on camera, we was like, wait a minute, oh my God, Wendy mom die and you had the incident where she fell out on Halloween when she had the Statue of Liberty costume and she fell out live ain't nobody know what was going on with Wendy what really I think broke Wendy was when her husband Nick Kev had a, a, an affair it's been going on for some years mistress got pregnant and I think that just broke Wendy. Wendy has always said, yes, yeah, some people cheat, but if my husband has a, a baby on me, it's over. And she said it like she meant it. She meant exactly what she said. So her marriage ended. And I think that's what really broke her. One, one of the things from the documentary that you know, I felt it here, I felt it down on the inside here, is when Alex, her niece, told us that Wendy's mom told Alex, whatever you do, please make sure that you protect Wendy because she was watching Wendy on the show and she saw the fire, you know, her eyes, the light that was in Wendy's eye started to dim. And a mother knows, a mother knows her child. That divorce, which is very public, and the fact that he had a baby on her really broke Wendy. She filmed the biopic, her biopic on Lifetime. And for those of you who don't know, Wendy had a three picture deal with Lifetime. The biopic, the documentary a couple of years ago, and now this one is the third film in her three picture deal. But she, you know, kind of had to relive some of that trauma that she experienced by her life because we know she's battled with addiction and alcohol and things of that particular nature. Wendy's show was canceled and what we found in the document, child, they ain't nobody had the decency to tell Wendy that her goddamn show was canceled. How did y'all not think, you know, it was important to let the creator of the show know that her show is no longer. They cancel her show. Wendy loves to work. She loves to talk. She loves to be in front of the camera. She's told us over and over again, I want to be famous. I didn't set out to be wealthy. The wealth was a part of it, but I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be known. These are all of the things that Wendy was dealing with coming into this documentary. In addition to the diseases that she was previously diagnosed with, which was the lymphedema and of course the Graves disease, which Graves' disease is the reason why her eyes pokes out and the lymphedema is why she struggles with walking because she's lost, I think, about like 93, 92% of the feeling in her feet. So you think about all of that. That woman is carrying all of that. And you just took all of that away from her when you were struggling. So she wanted to do a comeback podcast is what she always said that she was going to start. Now, right before this documentary came out, certain things started happening. Her niece, Alex, was going on like this press run talking about the documentary. She went over to The View. She was talking to them about what was going on with Wendy, issues that they had with the guardianship. Then you had Wendy's guardian who submitted a petition to have the court stop the documentary from coming out. Okay? That was a little suspicious right there too. But the court said no, the documentary is still going to come out. And then it hit us with this new diagnosis that Wendy, and they said that she had progressive aphasia. I think I'm saying that right. Frontal temporal dementia. I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying it right. For those of you who don't know what those things are, I'm going to tell you what they are. I did a little bit of research. Progressive aphasia is a rare nervous system syndrome that affects the ability to communicate. People who have it can have trouble expressing their thoughts and understanding and finding their words. They have problems or trouble understanding language, speaking to people. Um, they're not able to communicate. Some of them become nonverbal. So that's what aphasia is. And then you have the dementia that she was also diagnosed with and um, mainly affects the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. This is the part of the brain that's usually associated with personality and behavior. Basically, the frontal lobe starts to shrink and it then causes problems with that particular person. 
person, meaning they have increasingly inappropriate social behavior, loss of empathy, interpersonal skills, lack of judgment, unable to communicate, unable to understand things, lacks of interest, very compulsive behavior, bitch everything that we saw in this goddamn documentary. But Wendy's team decided to release this information because they wanted to prepare everyone for what we were going to see on this documentary. So considering everything that Wendy has been going through and now you add these layers of health issues to it, I was like, oh God, what the hell am I about to watch? Let's talk about some of the people that's in this documentary, starting with Will Shelby. Will is Wendy's manager, along with some girl named Keisha Anderson. What I'm trying to understand is, what the hell are y'all managing? I'm not understanding what Will, I'm not understanding what Keisha is trying to manage. Wendy was like, who is this girl, Keisha? Why is she here? You trying to make me wear something I don't want to wear. I want to wear Chanel. Chanel, Chanel, Chanel is what I want to wear. What the hell is Will and Keisha managing? Wendy didn't have a talk show. All we kept talking about was this podcast. Podcast, podcast. The whole purpose of this documentary, which they made clear this is what Wendy wanted, was for it to act as a catalyst, the driving force behind Wendy's big comeback. But what had happened was, once them lifetime producers and cameramen started going into Wendy's apartment and they started recording stuff, they was like, oh no, oh the goddamn now, what the hell is going on in this apartment? Tell y'all ain't got no food in the refrigerator. All we see is liquor going around and Wendy is right here cussing us all out. What is going on? Will, Keisha, Sean, which is the publicist, I don't know, Wendy's fine. I don't know why y'all say she can't make a comeback. She can't do a podcast. Obviously, something is going on with Wendy. She's a little incoherent. And y'all bitches just walking around saying yes, yes, yes. Now, we know Will a little bit. Coming into the documentary, Wendy has talked about Will quite a bit on her show. This is the same Will that people was trying to say that she was sleeping with. But if I'm not mistaken, Will has a wife. And they made it quite clear that nothing was going on. Coming into this, though, I was kind of looking at him a little side-eyed. Because, again, what the hell are you managing? Because Wendy he ain't doing nothing. And then at one point, I'm thinking like, is he her house manager? Is he her business affairs manager? Or was he appointed by the guardianship? I was a little confused of who the hell he was. Now, one scene really pissed me off was when he came into the house and he was talking about Wendy the bottle. This bottle has been here. You finish this bottle, did you eat anything? Wendy, that's $15,000, 15, 10 bands or something like that in here. Why is the money high? Wendy looked at him and she was like, you bought me the goddamn money. How Wendy is getting this liquor, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I, I still feel about Will. I think he does have Wendy's best interest at heart, but that bitch Sean. Oh, no, 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 no. And you know what the funny thing about it? Part one, everybody, oh, Sean, this, you know, I could never let Wendy or anybody talk to me the way Wendy talked to Sean. Told Sean to go get some liposuction. Um, told Sean to go downstairs and order something to make herself fat. You know, one thing I can say about Miss Wendy Williams, honey, Wendy knows how to give a good show. Now, I found myself laughing a couple of times through this documentary. If you know me, you know, a lot of times I laugh at a lot of inappropriate shit, stuff I shouldn't be laughing at. But Wendy knows how to feed to the camera, honey. Like, Wendy knows exactly what to do, when to say it, how she said I don't care if they say she got dementia or not. When that red light is on, girl, Wendy knows how to put on the show. So it's like sometimes I was thinking, child, ain't that wrong with the hell, Wendy. Wendy Williams up here putting on in front of this damn camera. But Sean has to be probably the stupidest publicist I have ever seen in my life. She's an opportunist. She was trying to latch on to Wendy. She took Wendy all the way out there to LA and didn't tell Will, didn't tell the guardianship. Talking about, do you want to go to the goddamn Oscars? Wendy ain't in no conditions to go to no Oscars, girl. That girl is an opportunist and I am glad that Will cussed her ass out and we didn't see her no more when they got back from LA. Because apparently whatever this trip was to LA really broke Wendy when she actually came back. We got her niece Alex. We got her son, Kevin Jr. We got her nephew, Travis. We got her best friend, Reg. I've never seen Reg before. She's always talked about Reg, but it was good to actually see her. Then you got Wanda, who came in towards the end, her brother. One of the most surprising people in the documentary was DJ Booth. 
I was really, really glad to see DJ Booth because I, I wanted to hear what he had to say. Because if you recall, Wendy was doing her show, news came out about Kev, the divorce, and COVID happened, so she was just at home. The only person at the time who Wendy was allowing in her house was DJ Booth. He got to see a lot of things. If you recall, they asked him a document, did he know about Wendy's condition? And he was like, he chose not to answer. He basically became the new Kev after her and Kev said. He was making sure that she ate, making sure she was okay. He came to the Wendy Williams show from home. He was doing all of the, the, the production behind the scenes at the apartment. If you remember, he ended up getting fired and him and Wendy kind of fell out, but you know, they got back on the good foot. But I was glad to see him and I was glad to see and hear what he brought to the documentary. It was also a legend child that one time Wendy had took her shirt off took her bra off and took her panties off. And she was touching herself, child. Touching herself down on the inside. And she was telling DJ Booth to come, come, uh, come, come, uh, DJ Booth, come. I don't know how true that is, but that's what allegedly happened. All right, y'all, so let's get into this money. Because I believe this is the part that has everybody like, what the hell is going on with Wendy? Now, I will say this, I truly believe that Wendy not having access to her money is one of the biggest driving forces that's causing her to lose it just a little bit. Now, what we know is this. Wendy, she ended up back down in Miami, which is where her entire family is down there. And during this time, it appears that her son, Kev, was taking really good care of her. Wendy was vegan. She was eating good. She actually put on some pounds. She was a little heavier. She was going to um, her doctor's appointments. She was working out. She had a trainer. You remember that video that Kevin posted when him and her were walking, you know, on the beach. We saw the video of Wendy cooking with her family. She seemed to be very healthy and in good spirits. What had happened was, Wendy was down in Miami and her credit card, her Amex, stopped working. And her Amex stopped working. She reached out to, you know, Amex or the bank. Hey, what's going on? My Amex isn't working. So allegedly, what we've learned so far is that someone tipped Wells Fargo off that they had some concerns about Wendy's spending or her money. We've heard that large lump sums of money went missing or withdrawn from her account. Somebody tipped Wells Fargo off. They became suspicious. So what did they do? Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut all of it down. And they froze her account. They basically uh, set a hearing for Wendy to return back to New York City because Wells Fargo basically asked the courts to intervene. What we also learned is that Deb Bar Mercury, which, which is the producers of the Wendy Williams show, was wanting Wendy to come back home. They didn't really know what was going on with Wendy, but we have obligations. We don't, we're not sure if you're sick or if you're not sick. If you're just down there hanging out, you need to come on back home. We need to get you up here. Little Kev told us is that he was telling them my mom is still healing. She does not need to return back to a talk show. She needs to be focused on healing herself both inside and out, which apparently it looked like they were doing a good job. But when they threatened to take her money away, Wendy got on that goddamn plane and she went back to New York City, which I don't blame her. But, but this is when things started getting crazy because when she went back up there in 2022, if I'm not mistaken, she didn't come back home again until about 2023. But she was gone for a long period of time. And while she was there, things just went downhill for Auntie. The courts basically said that you are not competent enough to know what's going on with your money. So we're going to appoint someone. They appointed a, a court appointed guardian. Little Kev had power of attorney over his mom's stuff, but the judge removed Little Kev and he no longer had jurisdiction over any of Wendy's business, specifically her money. Now, mind you, Wendy is up under a financial guardianship. I had to reach out to my good Judy, the Esquire, Mario, for him to give me an understanding. Because I didn't understand this guardianship shit. I was like, how the hell can the bank take control of your money and don't and tell you you can't have it? And not only tell you, but they tell your son, they tell your child. Y'all can't have access to any of this. I was a little confused by that. But what he told me was, it's not like the guardianship that Britney Spears had. Well, her dad had 
total control over her. Wendy Williams is just a financial guardianship. That's why when she tricked them, her and Sean went out to LA. Sean was out there trying to take her to the goddamn Oscars. Took her to NBC Universal for a meeting that they know damn well Wendy was in, in was not in her right mind to have. That's why Will really couldn't do anything because Wendy is a grown ass woman. She's up on a financial conservatorship, but she can get on whatever plane and do whatever the hell she want to do. But that's why her ass stayed out there in LA for a couple of days or two. Then she bought her ass back to New York City. A lot of y'all was talking about Lil Kev's spending habits. Let me tell y'all something. Mind poor people problems and stay out of rich people's problems. Rich people, ma'am, ain't poor people, ma'am. My Uber Eats bill ain't Little Kev's Uber Eats bill. My rent ain't Kevin's rent. Y'all need to mind y'all damn business. Now, I will admit that, you know, a $100,000 Uber Eats bill does seem a little excessive, but Wendy said that she's a luxurious woman. Everything that she does is for her son. So she wanted to put Kev in an $80,000 a year condo. That's her business. She got the money to actually do that. If she approves her son to have a $100,000 birthday party or a $100,000 Uber Eats bill, that's their business. That ain't got nothing to do with us. That is rich people's problems. Poor people stay in your poor ass place. We're not the same. Wendy's money, the little money that I make, it is not the same. Wendy's money and the little money y'all make, it is not the same. Mind your damn business. So you can't say that this is Kev's fault. This is the lifestyle that he has become accustomed to. So he lived a lifestyle that his mother has made him accustomed to. But I want to know who the hell tipped off Wells Fargo. I feel it's Big Kev. I believe it's the daddy. I don't think the daddy realized by tipping them off, it was going to cut into his cash flow as well too. Wendy not having access to her money was driving her crazy. It was driving her to drink. It was driving her to be sporadic. Y'all are taking control away from a woman who has been used to having control of her life. She was doing videos at one point before you know, things went a little crazy. Hey, if this happened to me, it can happen to you. They are taking my money. They won't tell me why. The court sealed all the documents, so we don't know who tipped them off. What are the stuff that they was actually looking at? Having someone tell her what she can and cannot do, that broke Wendy. I'm gonna tell you another thing that broke Wendy. Child, this alcohol. Baby, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Wendy wanted vodka. Wendy ass was throwing them back, okay? Wendy was throwing them back. She was throwing them to the front. She was throwing them to the side. She was throwing that ass in a circle for vodka. Wendy wanted vodka. One of the things that has been very clear about this documentary, Wendy like to flip people to bird. <laughs> she will throw a middle finger up at you real quick. And a bitch loves a good cocktail, okay? Let me know. Let me rephrase that. She don't like a cocktail. Bitch, Wendy like the whole damn bottle. Wendy wanted Vodka. Wendy, they said, come home with a bottle of Tito's. Not the little bottle of Tito's. Not the $19.99 bottle of Tito's. Not the $29.99 bottle of Tito's. Baby, the big 1.5 liter bottle, party size bottle of Tito's. The big one, the bread, big old one. That's the one that she would crawl in the bed, honey, and she would drink the whole damn thing by her damn self. She doesn't need nobody else to help her. Wendy is a goddamn drunk. And what Kevin told us, her dementia, has probably or was brought on by the alcohol. It's an alcohol-induced dementia. But my question is, if Wendy don't quote-unquote have access to her funds, who the hell was buying the liquor? Who was going down to the Red Dot store? Who was going to the ABC store? And when she had the driver take her down there, who was buying the goddamn liquor? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Where is the money coming from? from. I also realized this too. As much as being down in Miami with her family was probably the best thing for her, Wendy was the one who was putting distance between her family and her. Meaning, Wendy knew when she was down in Miami, she couldn't drink, honey. Drinking was off limits. Little Kev wouldn't let her drink. Wanda wouldn't let her drink. Nobody was letting Wendy drink when she was down in Miami. That's why her ass didn't go back. Because up in New York, she can drink like she wanna. She can smoke like she wanna. She can cuss a bitch out like she wanna. Child, did y'all see when Wendy Williams told the, the nail tech, are you stupid? Only one coat, please. You only one? Okay. Yes, just one. Oh, oh God. What are you doing? Uh, this just make sure that the, the coat no. here. No, no, take this off. Okay. You said the same thing. Take that off. Are you stupid? 
Wendy is a fool. And she and when she do these things, she knows how to look directly at the camera when she's saying it as well, too. Wendy, let me tell you something. She may have aphasia. She may have dementia. Let me tell you something. She ain't too crazy to know when she want that goddamn liquor. That's what I have learned from this documentary. And what I think, Wanda and Lil Kev gave Wendy an ultimatum. You gotta get better. If you don't stop this drinking, then I'm gonna wash my hands clean of you. Wendy has been in, in, in front of a microphone in front of a television for what almost 30 years wendy not only lost everything of importance in her life her husband her family her son was now in college she lost her show she was sick with these you know different elements her body was somewhat failing her the addiction and then after all of that was gone you left this lady in this big ass apartment in new york city by herself wendy was bored as hell and can we talk about them black walls i you know what black walls are cute they can be cute but not in excess the whole house was black my mama always told me let the light in your house. Open up the windows. My mom used to get up every morning. She used to get up and she used to be singing or humming. Come in every room. Click, click, click. Open them goddamn blinds and let the light in. I can't stand going to no dark and gloomy house. I hate it. And Wendy's house just, it was just dark and gloomy, but it was just heavy. Just watching this, it was just heavy. Let the light in your house. Stop living in darkness. My mom said, open the window and let that devil out. Open the doors and let the devil out. Y'all need to let the devil out of some of y'all homes. Wendy was not only stressing about her money, she was bored as hell. That's why she was trying to do this podcast. That's how I also knew something was wrong with Wendy too. Prior to this documentary, when she started doing a little bit of press that time she was on TMZ, or when she did that, um, she went to some kind of woman's you know, empowerment thing. She kept saying podcast. Yes, I'm gonna start podcast. I'm rich. I'm famous. Podcast. And I'm like, bitch, finish the goddamn sentences. Why not a podcast? Wendy said it. I'm going to start a podcast. Now we know why she was having some of those issues because of the aphasia and the dementia. That's when I started remembering something was wrong with Wendy. Even, you know, when she was still on the show, she used to forget things. And, you know, our friend Norman used to help her, but she used to, she used to bark at his ass sometimes, too. Wendy has said, I want fame. I want people to know who I am. When she was in LA, are there gonna be celebrities there reading the tabloids? She felt disconnected. She didn't have anything, anybody. Her work really is all that she had. But what we learned is that Big Kev was the one that was keeping her focused keeping her on track when it comes to this. Wendy was bored. She was really, really bored. And I think she needed something to do. She needed to interact with people. When Black China came, she was so excited to see Black China. She wanted to see people. She wanted to interact with people. So I, I think all of those things were contributing factors to where Wendy was. I'm gonna say this though this documentary, I was very, very nervous. But I will say I walked away from the documentary with hope for Wendy because enter Wanda, her sister. And what we learned is her sister was not a part of this documentary in the beginning because the documentary was supposed to be all about Wendy's comeback. It was evident that Wanda didn't want no parts of that. She knew that her sister needed help and trying to get her back on TV or get her back in the forefront, it wasn't it. Lifetime, the producers even know it. When they started filming it, there was a whole lot of something ain't right. They used to have these off camera, not off, well, it was on camera, but it was off. These fourth wall conversations with Will and, and Sean and all these people like, I don't think something's wrong with Wendy. Something's not right here. And Lifetime has actually come out and said that they did not know that there was a diagnosis when it came to Wendy. Had they known that, which appears everyone is kept secret and quiet is kept, from what we've learned, it appears that Kev and DJ Booth knew about Wendy's possible dementia a long time ago, but they just kept the diagnosis a secret. It's obvious that this guardianship that she's a part of is not helping her. She's up there in New York, so people said, well, if they knew Wendy was up there, why didn't they go visit? Well, if you listen carefully, the niece did go up there. The nephew said he flew up there. Wanda even said she flew up there. Her brother even said that he flew up there as well, too. So it's not like they just left her up there. They were trying their best, but this guardianship was in place. Wanda said that she offered to be the guardian. She didn't know what a guardian was. She was willing to learn it. When she said that, she said a wall went up. There was no 
communication anymore. Everything started off friendly. Now you have this particular situation where this guardianship may not be the best thing for Wendy. So watching this, it seems like Wendy is okay now present day the documentary wrapped the april of last year the last 30 minutes of the documentary was stuff that was filmed in october to me it seems like the family is in cahoots to work to try to get wendy out of there did y'all see when wendy called denise and denise passed the phone to wanda and wanda took it off speak phone and she started talking wendy uh-huh you called her what happened all right, write it down, put it in your little notebook. They asked her, what was that about? She said, I'm not at liberty to say. Wendy called um, Will. Will said, I'm filming stuff. Oh, okay, Wendy immediately knew what was going on. Even listening to her in those short little periods, she sounded a little different. And Wanda even said, it's almost like he's talking to the old Wendy's. I have a strong inkling and a feeling that this Wendy might be okay when she comes out. I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, because it seems like now the family is on one accord. It was evident that they had a lot of infighting going on when the guardianship was first in place. And what we've learned is if a judge feels that there's infighting and people trying to get control, they're gonna look away from the family and move towards a court appointed guardian. Wendy's guardianship renews every year. And it sounds like it's coming up sometime this spring. But just looking at things, it looks like the family is working together and they're trying to get all of their ducks in a row. So I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic that everything is going to work out with Wendy. Wendy, we love you. You gave us polarizing entertainment. Even if you're not in your right mind, girl, you gave us some good TV. It was comedic. It was serious. It was hard to see you that the way that you were. But being up in New York is not healthy for you. You need to go back down to Florida with your family continue to heal and when they feel that okay maybe there's a possibility that Wendy can make some type of return in whatever capacity that he is we'll see like I said it was hard seeing Wendy the way that, that, that she was cussing folks out calling her brother her son these moments where she just comes in and out seeing her so strong on television and on hearing her so strong on the radio to see her like this Wendy deserves better and I pray that this is not the end of her story I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please like this video, share it on all of your social media platforms, and I will see you guys next time.